Hey guys, welcome to Dog Life, a brand new show. Uh, well, kind of not really a brand new show. We've, we've done some in the past, so we want to welcome new viewers and we want to welcome back older viewers. We kind of did a combination from our training show and our cooking show to a show called Dog Life that we want to interact with you. We want to hear what you want to see and what you want to do. Uh, so many times we get from our clients, they want tips about grooming or pet friendly places or food or whatever it is. And we're always being asked, hey, do you like this product? Or do you like that? So we figured, let's make a show about it. Yep. You know, we want to see what it is that you want. We'll ask the vet, we'll ask the trainer, um, which is us. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we'll even get some opinions from some others. Uh, we'll have some correspondence that will be out on site, finding pet friendly places in various cities across the United States, places that you may like to want or want to go for vacation. And of course, we're always going to hit our cooking segment uh, with our nutrition. Uh, as we all know that we all kind of tend to give our dogs some some of our food at times. So we want to make sure that they're healthy, but not only healthy for, that, for them, but healthy for us. Mm -hmm. So with no further ado, let's get going. So first up today, we're going to talk a little bit about your dog's senses and some things that you may not know about how your dog experiences the world. One thing that we always hear from our clients is that they're very shocked to find that the puppies, when they're born, can't hear and can't see. Their eyes don't open until 14 days and their ears don't open until about 21 days. So it's kind of basically they're relying on their sense of touch and their sense That's of the bad. smell. So let's take a look and let's watch and see this first clip. A dog's senses are very different than ours. When puppies are born, they cannot see or hear. Touch is the first sense the dog develops as their entire body, including their paws, are covered with touch-sensitive nerve endings. Their ability to smell is what enables them to find their way around. The dog's olfactory sense is so amazing that they can literally smell their owner from four miles away. They can smell a teaspoon of sugar in one million gallons of water. Many of us question our dog's hearing when we call them and they don't respond, but rest assured, it is just selective hearing as they can locate the source of a sound in one six hundredths of a second and can hear sounds four times farther away than any human can. Dogs also hear higher pitch sounds and can detect higher frequency ranges. This is why we will respond positively to people with higher pitched voices. Your dog's eyes are also very different. If you stand directly in front of a dog, they cannot see the center of your face because of the placement of their eyes. In order for the dog to see your entire face, they must view you from an angle. Dogs have the peripheral vision of 250 degrees without turning their heads. We as humans have 180 degrees, so your dog literally can see you walking behind them. It is a common myth that dogs cannot see color. They actually see ranges of blues, yellows, and gray, and they see better when the light is low. Their vision is actually 20, 75, and some of ours wear it as 2020, and some dogs even have been fitted glasses with called doggles, which help protect sensitive eyes from injury or include corrective lenses to improve canine acuity. I cannot believe how much the nose knows. I mean, we utilize it in our training, which is really awesome because we use various scents to determine the personality of puppies, mm -hmm. but we also use it in the individualized training. We do. We use peppermint and rosemary uh, when we're doing individualized training with the puppies to improve memory and focus. Which takes us to our next segment of our cooking. Because what is the most to give you memory and focus and concentration, which is breakfast. And that's something that we often, a lot of us just kind of grab something or hit the Starbucks through the drive through grab something on the go. And we're really not taking full advantage of some of the things that we're able to do and can kind of get us through the day. You know, breakfast being the most important meal of the day, um, it also, you know, helps and boosts our metabolism. So let's head over to the kitchen and we are gonna make something that's gonna be quick tasteful, easy, and something you can share with your dog. <laughs> all right, guys, well, we are gonna get all ready here. Get my apron on, I'll be all set. So, you know, they say too that skipping breakfast actually makes you either eat more later or 
uh, makes you more hungry. Uh, I, it's for me, I find it actually different. I find that if I don't eat breakfast, I actually can go to dinner and don't have to eat at all. But it's, it kind of makes me wonder, I'm gonna turn the oven on before I forget, um, makes, uh, kind of makes me wonder as far as with the dogs, like do they, you know, get hungry and stuff. So it was, I was looking and they were saying it was between like eight and 12 hours that their stomach where they actually feel hunger. It's like, I wonder if they feel hunger like we do, like if our belly rumbles or, you know, you can sometimes hear it. I know my dog, Bernard, um, I have to actually feed him like six or seven times because he's got some digestive issues. So it, the smaller meals, but you know, they say once again, people with smaller meals, um, it's better, but now all this stuff that's coming out, it's talking about intermittent fasting where that's actually better for us. Um, and I've even heard some veterinarians and so forth talk about that it's better for dogs. Uh, one of the well-known vet, uh, veterinarians that works with McCullough talks about that quite a bit, how, you know, give your dog that more time. Um, so we were wondering how many, you know, what do people do? Do they feed them twice a day, three times a day? I know that's one question we always get here with, uh, for our puppies when they leave, the, our clients want to know when's the first time that we can basically take away the lunch or when can we start, when should we start feeding once a day? Of course, we always recommend talk to the veterinarian because just as individual as you are, your dog is as well. So let's get going on our, our frittatas here and we'll kind of get this um, up to par and we'll start talking about it as everything as we go as well. So we're first going to start off with sauteing up our shiitake mushrooms. Now shiitake mushrooms are something that it's, are used a lot in Chinese veterinary medicine. Um, they're more of a medicinal mushroom. They help boost up the immune system. So that's one thing good for us and also good for our dogs. So we're gonna kind of get that going in here. Actually, I should put a little bit more olive oil and we're gonna saute that up. And the reason that we're sauteing up the ingredients prior to placing them in with the eggs is we're kind of pulling out more flavor because we aren't using salt and pepper. We're gonna rely on basil, oregano, and actually, actually rely on some pecorano cheese uh, in order to do so. Okay, we're smoking here. Hopefully we're not gonna catch on fire. These hot plates, when you don't use them very often. Um, so we're gonna let that go. In the meantime, while that's kind of simmering up, we are going to mix up our crunch factor for our fruit salad. And that basically, I've used a half a cup of oats. Uh, you can use steel cut, you can use quick oats, you can use regular oats, whatever you want. Don't, don't worry about it. I've used a quarter cup of slivered almonds. Now, almonds are good for the heart. They're also good for the dog. But the reason you hear a lot of times almonds aren't good for dogs is because they're talking about the whole almonds where a lot of them are very easily to choke on. And so we use just the slivered ones and they get actually kind of crushed up when they get toasted and baked and put on the fruit as well. Also, we did a quarter cup of unsweetened coconut. So from there, we're just gonna simply mix it with, we used a, a, the liquid coconut oil, which is like this. If you have uh, the solid, don't worry about it. Go ahead, just melt it down a little bit. We used one tablespoon, then two tablespoons of pure maple syrup. I need to turn this off here. Uh, pure maple syrup, and probably it was about maybe a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Pure vanilla too, not the imitation. Uh, so we did that. We warmed it slightly in the microwave in order just to blend the oils together with the syrup. And now we're going to put it in our mixture. And we're just going to stir that right up. And do that on. And then we're going to put this on our lined parchment paper sheet. Just like this. And we'll spread this out and get this going in the oven. And you're probably just going to want to stir it maybe about a quarter of the way, halfway a little bit. Kind of, I don't know, I, people always laugh that I don't cook by time, I cook by smell, which is kind of funny because that is really what your dog smells and what your dog does is he does so much by smell, which we learned in our earlier clip as far as our senses go. So I'm going to put this in the oven for right now. We've got it on 350. And it, that's kind of a versatile um, temperature. I mean, everybody kind of cooks stuff at 350. You want to cook at 375, cook it at 375. You're just simply going to just lessen your time, you know, wait for it to get done and that, that's pretty much it. So we're going to go with that. We're also going to add a little bit of spinach into here. Now spinach is good for the dogs. If you're as old as me, you may remember the cartoon Popeye um, where he built his biceps or forearms, I think it was his forearms, with the spinach. So this is the same thing it does for your dog. It helps build the bones. It also helps with their blood and their circulation. So we're just going to get that in there as well. 
kind of going down. And we're just going to shrink it down. Just another little touch more oil because the mushrooms are where they absorb everything very quickly. So especially the shiitake ones, they seem to absorb it for whatever reason more so than the others. But let's get all these dirty dishes out of our way. Okay, so we're going to get this up here. And we're going to put in a little bit of basil and oregano because I have to just always do this. Um, and just kind of do whatever you like. Whoops, I'm doing wonders here. Oh my goodness. Uh, just kind of put in whatever flavor and seasons you like. If you want to do thyme, you want to do rosemary, you want to, whatever it is, you know, just kind of go for it. I always have the tendency to just to go for the Italian uh, seasonings. Because we're not, remember, we're not using salt and pepper. And what we're doing is we're going to be relying on our cheese to actually flavor our eggs and give it that little bit of a salty taste for us there. We'll let this kind of go up. And next we're going to more dirty dishes. Uh, talk about the eggs. And I'm going to bring Miss Christina. Come on in here. I want the audience to know. Christina has a farm. Um, so she knows she has chickens. She has turkey. She has goats. She has horses. She has everything. It's kind of cool. Um, plus dogs. Her farm is called Three Dog Farm, even though she has four, far, four dogs. <laughs> so how she did three, I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, white eggs. Now we all go to the store and we see the white eggs and we see the brown eggs. And our natural assumption is the brown eggs are healthier for us, correct? Yeah. Are they? No, they're the, they're the same. It's the same egg, just a different chicken laid it. Well, explain to them what makes the difference. Because well, I thought this was really kind of cool. Uh, chicken with red earlobes lays brown my eggs. Stuff. <laughs> brown eggs, and a chicken with white earlobes lays white eggs. And so, with the advent of you know like uh, more large scale farming and hybrid layers like um, California whites and stuff that lay white eggs uh, at a really high rate, that's how white eggs became the egg in the stores. And people see, I think they see brown eggs as more of a novelty. Yeah, these days. Well, another thing that kind of is kind of fascinating, and I thought was she was kind of crazy when I first met her. Um, still do, but anyway, uh, when she brought me eggs the first time, like she didn't put them in the refrigerator, and I'm like, okay, your eggs have to be refrigerated, and no. she's like, no, they don't. And I'm like, yeah, eggs have to be refrigerated, not, but not fresh eggs, not eggs. If you have backyard hens, you don't necessarily have to refrigerate your eggs because. They haven't been, if you don't wash your eggs, they still have the bloom, the protective covering on them, uh, on the egg that uh, inhibits uh, bacterial ah, uh, up there. issues from entering the egg. Let um, me wash my hands behind you. Oh, Here you go. That You keep talking to them. If you um, buy eggs in the store, they're washed because that's the hygienic thing to do. And so that protective bloom, that covering has been removed and... That's why you have to refrigerate them to, to keep yourself from getting sick with salmonella or anything else that might enter the egg shell because it's a porous shell. Right. Well, salmonella actually, you know, a lot of times people think they get sick from the eggs. They actually get so sick from the egg shell itself is what has the salmonella on it. So, all right. So we have our eggs. We actually went with, okay, you can leave now. <laughs> I'm only kidding. You can stay and help cook okay, if you want. Okay. All right. Um, I just need my space, I need my room to, to move around or whichever. Uh, so I've got the eggs. I decided to do three egg yolks and three egg whites instead of doing all six to kind of cut down on the fat. Remember, um, eggs have six grams of protein, they have five grams of fat. So if you want to adjust, eggs is one of the best things to give your dog. It's one of the best proteins to give your dog. So it works really, really well all the way around for us. I've even read that eggs help move, boost our metabolism. So some of us, as we get older and we get those little handles, you know, that we have to deal with. So anyway, we are going to whisk up our eggs here. And I put them in a container that it's easy to pour out. Um, it's just kind of a little tip. It's kind of nice uh, whether you have a, you know, a measuring cup that you can put them in or something that's got a little spout on it. And what we're going to do, as we said, is we're going to, oops, these guys are starting to get a little bit toasty. Got to make sure you don't burn it, right? All right, we're going to turn you off. And we are going to take you, if I can get my hands going here, goodness, and we're going to grate in some of the cheese. Because we're using this, like I said, as a salt flavor. Now, we're using the Pecorano cheese because it is a sheep's cheese, which uh, is great if your dog happens to have a dairy intolerance. So a lot of dogs do. Um, some dogs don't, so you just kind of, once again, like I said, this whole thing is all individualized for your dog, individualized for you. You know, what works best for you, 
what you like to do and so forth. So we are going to spray our eggs, our pan. Actually, we're just gonna use this. Now you can use a muffin tin or cups if you wanna do that. Um, I prefer, and I think they look prettier, if we just kind of spray them and put them in. So once again, get all this stuff out of my way. And we are going to very simply go ahead and get these started in here. I'm going to put down a little bit of mushrooms and a little bit of spinach in each one. And once again, like I said, we did this on purpose for, to be able to get our flavors. All right. Somewhat even. Some people will get a little bit more than others. I don't think Cosmos will really care. So I'll put that down. And now we're just gonna take our eggs and put them in there. And one thing nice about frittatas is you can do this up ahead of time. Um, you can keep them in your refrigerator, you can put them in the freezer and just kind of, you know, make a, a week's worth and grab it and go. Um, that's really what's so easy about a lot of this stuff. And frittatas are actually great made in a bigger pan. You can make them in a pie pan. Um, you can use your leftover vegetables from dinner, uh, whatever it is that you want to do. It, there's no rules. And that's, I, lo I love recipes. I love life with no rules. Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, I love recipes that don't have any rules, that you can just kind of be a little bit more creative and be able to do all kinds of different things. All right, we've got this done. Let's set this down here for dirty dishes. And now we're going to add in some tomatoes. Tomatoes are one of the best things you can have for breakfast um, because what it does is it helps with the digestion, helps with their digestion throughout the day. You know, a lot of people, they go and they grab that yogurt first off, but eating yogurt without on an empty stomach actually makes your stomach more acidic. So once again, and for dogs, I find that it is best in the research that I found to have the tomatoes cooked. So instead of eating them, because in the vine of the uh, tomato, yeah, the green part of it is something called lectin. And actually it's a natural um, pesticide. So it keeps away the bugs and all that kind of stuff. So don't let your dogs eat your tomato plants, especially if they like to do it. So we're gonna get this going in here and pop it right in the oven. Uh-oh, we need to give our granola there a stir. Might as well do that while we're here. I can see it's almost ready. Just a little bit longer on this. So we're going to get this all finished up for you guys and go watch this awesome clip of Christina. She went taking it to the streets basically to find out what the word on the streets are, what people do, what do they feed, where do they buy their dog food. Some of the things we found were actually kind of interesting. A lot of people, um, you know, we're trying to find the education factor. We want to be able to help people understand what the best thing to do with their dogs are because there are kids, right? Everybody loves them. So we'll be right back. Hey guys, Christina here, and we are headed out into Statesville to find out what the word on the street is about dog food. So come with me. Let's see what we can find. Dog? Yes, I have a dog. What kind of food do you have? A pit bull. Oh my goodness. And what kind of food do you eat? She gets a very specific diet of part hill science diet and part high fiber food. Okay, so do you feed um, just kibble or do you feed, do you cook for your dogs or anything like that? I don't. It's regular dog food. So, do you have a dog? Yes, I do. I have two. Yeah, what kind of dog do you have? Schnauzers. And what kind of food do you feed? I have all natural food. We have a Great Dane. And do you feed, what, what type of food do you do? Do you do uh, cooked, fresh? Do you do kibble? We do a combination of raw and cooked. So, how many times a day do you feed? I feed them twice a day. And, and they know the time to eat. Yes. She's fed twice a day, once in the morning and evening. Like, how often do you prepare the meals for her? We cook it once or twice a week for her. Okay, so it's not very hard to keep up with or anything like that. Nothing to keep up with, and it makes her happy. How many times a day do you feed her? Twice a day. Cool. What is the strangest thing that she's ever eaten? <laughs> Probably... Uh, she, we had to wrap her foot for a period of time, and she insisted upon eating the wrap for the foot. So, not great for her, but she insisted upon doing so. She likes to get in my cabinets and get out stuff, oh my. Um, <laughs> cookies, whatever, and she'll get them and she'll hide them. Ouches! Oh no! <laughs> in her bed, Stinker. and she even hides them behind the shower curtain. What's the strangest thing your dogs have ever eaten that you know of? Ooh, 
that's a hard one. They like fruits and vegetables, but I, they don't get their... Do they eat table food? Not, none. Where do you get your dog food? Uh, Chewy.com. <laughs> Everybody loves Chewy. Plug, plug. Um, to the door. Okay, so here's the question of the day. What's the weirdest thing she's ever eaten? My sock. Oh, a couch. He's eaten five couches, one stool, one electric chair, and a sock. Okay, well, there you have it. <laughs> From the street, couches. That's that's the food of the day. <laughs> so tell me, were you surprised at some of the answers? A little bit, a little bit, but not, but not surprised at the same time, because the people are creatures of habit. And some of us are used to getting our food at the grocery store and some, you know. That surprised me. Well, no, I shouldn't say surprised me because we had done this research a little bit on a show we had done a few times back um, on where people buy their food. And I think, what was it, 70 or 80 percent? 70 percent, I think, is what it was. I'm not sure if that was right. Buy it at Walgreens mm -hmm. and Walmart, which I, I mean, that kind of, I just worry about that because what are we feeding, you know? Not that... I don't know, I guess I just assume that the better pet food stores have better pet food. Even when you go into those stores, there's so many choices exactly. that it's confusing. Exactly. exactly, and that's one thing that we will do an episode on, I think, because we need to be able to go over the bag, show people exactly what stuff means, because it's so daunting. You go in there and you're just overwhelmed with everything. And you know, there's various sites online that um, Dog Food Advisor, I think, is yes. one, and a couple other ones that They've got it where, you know, they'll tell you, but they really don't tell you because I think of a liability factor or exactly. something like that. And you so. still have to find out what is right for your dog and their yeah. requirement. I just, I couldn't believe that one dog ate the couch. I know. <laughs> and with with like five what couches. Else, and what else did she say? And a sock. Oh my God. And an electric well, chair. Well, we know about socks because oh, of the yeah. labs. Yes. And labs are, you know, that's another thing. Labs are, are one of the puppies that we do and they have no genetic gene. Well, they literally will eat themselves to death. But let's get on to our product. Yes. Um, this was actually something we got because of the labs and the Goldens to slow down their eating. We wanted to see um, if by using this was going to make a difference for them. And what it is, it's called a Kong Tilts. And it's actually, it's kind of cool because it's plastic. But that's the only thing that I wasn't super crazy about. I would have liked to seen it... Um, I don't know. It's it's like I would have thought maybe a rubber. Yeah. You know, something like the Kong toy itself. Right. And basically what you do is you put the food inside there and then you end up screwing this on. And then it, it's kind of weighted, so it kind of goes back and wow. forth. Uh, it, it would have been nice to have been dishwasher safe, but it is washable and the pieces do come apart, so that's nice from that standpoint. Uh, like I said, uh, the plastic was from the standpoint my dog has a lot of dogs are allergic to plastic, mm -hmm. and Sammy will get puppy pimples, puppy zits, basically, because they have a plastic allergy. So that would be kind of a, a reason where I wouldn't want to use it every day for her. Actually, I probably wouldn't let her play with this, but it was actually really good for the puppies. What did you think? I like it, and I like that it comes in the small size and a little larger yeah. size for bigger dogs. Cosmos, our, the burner, our, our burner Cosmos, was <laughs> able, I can't talk today, able to get his nose down in there. It's not like he could you know, stick his whole mouth in there, but he can still tilt it around and right. drop the food out in, in a larger size, you know, for dogs his size or uh, grow adult dogs, but this is great for puppies. Um, I, I like it. I, I too wish it wasn't all plastic, mm -hmm. but it is a heavier duty. It's, yeah, it's more heavier duty, so that was kind of nice. I did find price points different. Uh, we've got it at dogsupplies.com. We paid $8.12 a unit. Uh, I believe I had to get an extra one, so I had to order from Petco because they weren't fully in stock there. Theirs was twelve seventy six. I paid plus shipping for that one, um, and then Amazon has it with and have it on Amazon Prime, but it is twenty, I think twenty dollars and ninety seven cents or forty seven cents or something like that on Amazon. So they really, really varied um, in price points, but. We figured we would let you see what the puppies thought. So why don't you go ahead and watch the puppies, and then when you come back, we'll be back in the kitchen. We'll be ready to plate it up and uh, have our breakfast. Yay. <laughs>
Welcome back guys. While you were gone, everything got done. Cosmos was ready to eat and be our official taste tester. So in our fruit salad, we used the three fruits that we used for some, for some specific reasons. Um, we have our apples because our apples actually have um, pectin in, which actually helps us with lowering our blood sugar. For the dogs, it helps with their teeth. It helps with their breath. And I've even heard people say, research on different sites, don't know if it's true, but I would love to, an apple a day helps keep the ear infections away. Okay. So for our for our babies here, huh? Right? No ear infections and some of these long haired longer eared dogs or ears, floppy yeah. ears are prone to it. Uh, we did the blueberries for being heart healthy and a great antioxidant. I know it's almost time to eat. You can see he's very anxious to get tasting this. Um, along with the bananas with the potassium. You know, and like we had talked about earlier, this isn't too replace your dog's meal. This is basically in addition. We all know that we like to give our dogs that extra treat have a special time and food is love food is the comfort zone you know we we go out to eat for special occasions yeah. we have big thanksgiving dinners and and holiday dinners and all that kind of stuff and because it's family and so that's what we want to gear everything and center it around i mean why not share it with our dog um it's their family too right i mean it, it just it feels I don't know, it's just kind of cool to, yeah. to cook and sit down and have a, have a meal with your dog. Anyway, uh, next week's show, we loved having you guys this week, but next week's show you're gonna love as well. And we are going to be talking about sleep and what certain personalities and the way that your dog sleeps, his position, tells us a little bit about his personality. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, then we've got an Italian dog bed that we're going to review and see if we like that. If the puppies like that, they're our ultimate tester, them and Cosmos. He, he prefers to test the food more than he does the products, <laughs> as long as it has cheese. Uh, then we are going to get a special uh, tip from uh, Brittany, who's our Boston correspondent, who is going to be telling us some dog-friendly places in Boston that you're able to go to and visit, which we're going to kind of do that throughout the United States. Uh, but we want this to be your show, guys. We want this to be you tell us what you want. So we're going to have our web guy um, put a, a little link on our website that you can upload your videos, upload your photos. Uh, this way we can share them with all the viewers. We want to have an amazing dog every week. Uh, this week we're going to share you with one of our amazing puppies, uh, the clip we're going to end up here. And remember, the website is doglife.tv, not .com, doglife.tv. We will have the recipe up there for you, uh, different things up there that we're going to get. And just as we grow, I know he's like, will you just let me eat already? So thanks for watching, guys. We look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Yes, you're a good job. Good girl. Good girl.